This demonstration is going to cover how to use a chop saw or a miter saw. Now this is one of those saws that most people would have in their house, so a lot of people have had experience using one. So I'm going to give you some of the finer details on how to get a, your best cut out of it. This machine is a 12 inch chop saw, but it's a slider, so I can slide in and out, kind of like a radial arm saw. So on this machine, we make to only two kinds of cuts. A miter, cu or a miter cut, which is anything that's not set at zero. Right now it's set at zero degrees. To make a miter, I simply turn the, the blade. Anything that's not zero degrees is considered a miter, M-I-T-E-R, miter cut. Most of our cuts will be at zero, and that's just a cross cut. It's a straight cross cut. So of course we put our, our board in here, hold it with your left, and you're going to pull down with your right. And it's as simple as that. When you cut, to get the cleanest cut, make sure that the blade is going at top speed. Now what I mean by that is, you bring it down, you get it lined up. First of all, make sure the blade is up off the board before you turn it on. But when you turn it on, give it about a second or two to actually speed up. Now cut. And that'll give you the best cut. If I turn it on, and I don't let it speed up, then it, does, it can't keep up with how fast you're plunging it in. It starts tearing chunks of wood out instead of shearing it off like a knife. So make sure the blade is going at top speed and drop it down or plunge it fairly slowly. Top speed blade, slowly plunge to get your best cut. If we do end up having to use the slider, and you saw when I cut, I did slightly pull it forward, most of your cuts are going to be pull it out, then turn it on and drop it down and cut away from you. If I cut down and pull towards me on a nice wide board like this, the blade is spinning this way and it wants to run at me. If I push it down in there and start pulling it the direction it already wants to go, it tends to run at me real fast and it, it could jam the blade. It could keep the blade from spinning at all. So if it's a nice wide board, bring it out to the end cut and plunge down at the end and push back. That's your safest cut. Now with that being said, and that's what you would put on the test, if it's a smaller board like this and I plunge, and as you can see I've only got maybe this much wood left to cut, I would plunge straight down and then make that tiny little forward cut. There's not nearly enough wood there for it to jam the blade or to run at me for any reason. So in general, if you don't have to use the slide, don't use the slide. Uh, it, you'll get better cuts if it's just an up-down plunge than you will if you're doing this. And besides, if I come all the way out, plunge, and cut, the blade will do this and try to lift the board up off the table because I'm now cutting with the back end of the blade instead of the front. So there are those tiny little rules that, are, that you need to know to get the best cut of when to pull, when to plunge, how fast, and things like that. The draw of this, you know, how wide a board can it cut with that slide, is 12 inches wide. And that's easy to remember because this is a 12 inch blade. 12 inch blade, 12 inch draw. So 12 and 12. So that's easy to remember. Again, the saw makes a lot of sawdust and you can see it all behind the saw when you come to use it. But like the other machines, if I grab a small handful of sawdust and I put it here on the saw, if I try to cut now my board is up off the table a little bit and I have the same problem I had on the tiger saw. Elevated board, I get a skewed cut. It now is angled slightly. Or if I have all this sawdust here and I push it back against the fence, there's a huge gap right here that I, I, can't, I can't push it any further. So now my cut, instead of being skewed this way, is now skewed that way and I get an unsquare cut. So again, make sure you try to get all that sawdust out of the way before you make your cut. It should be nice and tight against the fence. The shortest board that you can cut is four inches long. Four inches is about this, this long. That gives me a nice three inch margin of safety <clears throat> and then I've got an inch still away from my fingers to cut. Now that still would make me nervous but that's within reason. I'm, not, I'm still about this far from the blade because I can still see it and you know it's not going to run or jump at me. So a four inch board is the shortest that I can cut on this machine. If I have a board that is warped or twisted, you know, again, it, doesn't, it wobbles, it doesn't sit flat. That's a great way to get a kickback because it's not sitting square to the table, it's doing this and rattling and I'm trying to plunge a board through it. That tends to move it and then the piece will go flying back. That's why I have some plywood against the glass behind these saws is to prevent those kickbacks from shattering the glass and hurting somebody. 
To get the squarest cut, position the board down flat on the table, hopefully it doesn't wobble at all, and nice and tight against the fence. Every machine in the shop has some kind of fence system that it has to sit against, otherwise the board gets start moving. So hold it down flat on the table and into the fence, and my left hand is here on top, not way out here, because it's too easy to move this, right here on top, right where the machine is, and then my right hand does the cut. Now, of course, on this machine, you can do this way, but still the setup is the same. My right hand is on top, and my left hand does the cut. That is still uh, certainly acceptable uh, to, and safe to do. It just depends on do you like your left side or do you like your right side. Because I have set up here a stop that just simply fits over top of this fence, and it has two tape measures. The one in front is for this machine, the one in the back is for the machine down the way. And it runs on both ends. So this end is for that one and this end is for this one. So if I want, I don't know, 17 inches, I can set it up and there's my line. And now I'm forced to do it this way anyway. So again, that is perfectly acceptable. This is an accurate stop. So whatever you need, if you need to make a lot of the same length cuts like, as we do in a nightstand, set it up and you can make a cut, but your hand has to be on this piece. It can't be here. Now, obviously, my hand's too close, but even if the board was sticking out here, I need it on the piece that's pinching between these things here so it doesn't uh, move and shake and, and rattle out of the way and give you a kickback. So the next one, most of the cuts, uh, miter cuts, are set at 45 degrees, like a picture frame. So there's 45, and we lock it in, and then we make our miter cut. They don't have to be at 45 degrees, but the majority of them are. And on our nightstand, if that's what you're building, the miter cuts that we do are at, not, at 45 degrees, and that's what we're going to set it to. So that is our uh, most common miter cut. If you're cutting and you notice that the blade is burning the end of your board, I mean the end of the board turns black, usually that means you're either cutting too slow, but more often than that, it's just the fact that the blade is dull. If you end up with a lot of burns or you smell smoke or see it for that matter, let me know and I can quickly change the blade. I've got a new one in the back that I can put on. But we don't want burns. Burns mean that it's not cutting well and it means you're not getting a very square cut. It's not doing a good enough job. If you do get a kickback on this machine, generally it happens when the board is down all the way plunged in, into there. So it happens while you're like this and then a piece goes flying. If that happens, it's, it's pretty scary because you'll see it you know, come off the back and it's kind of loud. First thing I need you to do is to turn off the motor. Let go of that trigger so the blade stops spinning. If a kickback gets stuck in there, I don't want it to do any more damage. So turn off the motor and then let go and step back. Most of the time, a kickback, pieces go flying back and then can ricochet up. That's why I want you to take that step back. But at least turn off the machine. Kickbacks have done a lot of damage. I've seen a kickback ruin about two or three of these teeth. They actually snapped the tooth off and I had to throw the blade away. This alum solid aluminum bracket here that holds on this vacuum tube has shattered off and had to be re-welded. I've seen it break this guard. You know, it's done a lot of damage. So I want to make sure you're away from that damage and it's not getting you. I can fix the saw, but you can't be fixed. Miter saws are very common machines, so a lot of you have had the experience you need to work them safe. But make sure when you use them, set it up, hold on to it nice and tight, and then make your cut. Turn it on, let it speed up, and make your cut. Now the reason that I've used, uh, done the safety demonstrations in the order I have, our first demonstration was to cut a rough length, so we trimmed an end. It's an inch longer than I wanted. Now doing that, I have zero square sides. Because I had rough edges, these weren't square, nothing was square. Next step, jointer, I jointed the edge and got it nice and true and flat. Then, so this is square now to the faces. Then I went to the table saw and cut off the other edge. These two are now parallel. They're correct, they're done. Now this saw, we always want to trim one end. I have no idea if these two ends are square or not, and I have to assume that they're not because it wasn't square when I cut it on the tiger saw. So I simply trim an end, about an eighth of an inch, just trim off a hair. Now I know that that end is good. It's square and per or perpendicular to these sides. Now I flip it, 
measure the other side to where I want, and then I cut off the other end. Those are the four steps to squaring a board. So after I've got my board, joint a working edge, table saw the other edge, that's two steps. Trim one end, that's step three. Measure and cut to length, that's step four. And now I have a nice, perfectly square board that I can either glue up or use as is. One other nice feature on the chop saw is that you are perfectly allowed to stack narrow boards. Now, you can only stack these narrow boards if in no way will you be sliding the saw to cut them, which means the boards can't be any more than somewhere around three inches long, three inches wide. So if I need to trim the ends of two, three, maybe even four boards, stack them is fine as long as I've got a good grip. Stack them up and cut them off. And now I can flip the boards, line up the other end, and now I can cut them both to the exact length that I want. And like I said, three or four boards is okay as long as your hand can cover them and they sit flat against the back fence. So stacking narrow boards is all right on the chop saw.